is get that message out there and then people come themselves alhamdulillah so we don't have to do a sales fail we don't have to try to get your email I and know, but still, nah. it's a, you know something that gives you like and you know hey if you got questions <laughs> ask i'm here for you by and tell you like at least something yeah, so no, that, but I appreciate, I, I'm just curious, I'm just look, curious, you know. Uh, if you want to know, I'll tell you our belief. We believe in one creator, one Allah. Yeah. Wh whether you want to call him the creator, or sustainer, the, the all-merciful, whatever, but the one that created everything. We don't believe he's got kids, we don't believe he gets married, we don't believe he has baby mamas, we don't believe he impregnates people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is the creator of all of us, and he created all of us, right? Some of us, like Adam, our father, right? He was made without a mother, without a father, right? Eve, she was made without a mother, without a father from Adam, right? Jesus was born without a father, miraculous birth, right? Most of us are born with fathers and mothers, but it's all from the same creator, right? None of that makes you the physical son of God, right? The physical son of God, this is where they, people get all mess, messed up and stuff like that. Like, we believe that same creator sent the message to all of the different prophets, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. We love all of them. That's our belief, right? We don't believe in praying to people. We don't believe in praying to graves or statues or crosses. We believe you pray to that creator, the one that created everything that has a direct relationship with you so this is our belief right what do you think about it I, 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 that's what I got the book well from what I told you what do you think about it um, I just wanted to make sure why I was asking questions because I want you know there's good different good. people believe Here. different things take this with you too it's also free it's kind of good intro um, take this you know, because I'm like, is this the Quran or a Quran? It, so we only have one Quran, okay, right? I make, I the Bible. I don't, really, I don't know. Yeah. So, so yeah. the Bible, you have like this is the New World Translation, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. and this is the King James, yeah, yeah. and they've got different amount of verses and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. We're not like that. Okay. We have one Quran. It's 114 chapters. Yeah, begin with Al Fatiha. This is it. Okay. Good. The and only Quran, okay, right? Good. There's different methods of reciting in Arabic, for example, but there's only one Quran, yeah, right? Yeah. And you've got it. All right. Good. So read it. And yeah, want, you know, I want to, read, I want to see. Excellent. Myself. What do you believe now? I believe. In, I, don't know, I guess in the creator. I believe. Okay, so you're on. The, you're on the same path. Okay. So Other you, than that, you know. So let's take it step by step. You yeah. do believe there's a creator. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. And you believe that creator is just, and that creator is merciful, and that creator will be wise, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, like, let, let's say this, right? Let's say uh, you've got a phone, right? Um, was that a phone or is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. So whoever made that phone gave you a user guide, right? Yeah, yeah. So when somebody creates something, they have a method of teaching you how to use it. So you believe our creator would also, because he's wiser than Samsung and all that, right? Yeah, yeah. Will show us a way. So then you believe he sent his guidance, yes. right? Okay, so we're on the same page, yeah. right? That guidance is going to be standard, meaning it's going to be, what, you can't just be like, like right now you got to do good deeds, but then later I'm going to kill my own son and that way you can just go to heaven without, without any, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? You can't, you can't fall back and forth like that. That doesn't make sense. It's not fair, it's right? Like common it common denominator. Well, come, yeah, yeah. I like you, bro. You're, you're on it, man. Yeah. That's it. Uh, so we believe that common denominator is you believe in one God. Like look at the Ten Commandments, right? One Lord, you don't worship idols, you don't worship people, no false deities, no false gods. You worship that one creator because he's the one that created you and you follow the prophet of your time. What do you think, right? We good? All right, so you got Abraham, you got Moses, you got all those prophets. So if you were in that time, you would follow them. Then you had Jesus, peace be upon him. We believe he was a prophet, no doubt to that, right? So we believe in his time, you follow him, right? But when the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came, right? The Prophet Muhammad came with miracles, like things that, that, that science couldn't explain, right? So, and, and we can get into details of those. But that man couldn't read or write. The Prophet Muhammad couldn't read or write. So how could he write this? Like, how could he come up with something? When you read it, you'll realize the beauty of it, right? So if a man that can't copy from anybody, he can't plagiarize, he can't, I mean, you know, plagiarize, you gotta be able to read it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? He's not a poet, he's not a scholar, he's, he's just a man who couldn't read or write in a desert. And Allah revealed those miracles to him and that message. So then now you are, me are living in the time of the Prophet Muhammad. So that's the Prophet we follow. What do you think? Simple. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we're on the same page there, right? Like, yeah. what about this doesn't make sense to you? Uh, no, it makes sense to me. There you go. So I you... never heard it put this way, but yeah, it makes sense to me. And you heard it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you ready to be Muslim or what? <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you become Muslim, we don't ask you for no money. Okay. We don't ask you for no, we don't, you, got, you ain't got to sign up with our mosque, none of that stuff. It's all between you and your creator, right? Yeah. You need to know what's the purpose of your creation. You need to know what your creator wants you to do. And that's what this is, okay. right? And that's what we're giving out free. We're, we're just trying to connect people back with their creator, right? So when you're a Muslim, we don't drink alcohol. Like why? You think it hurts God if we get drunk? Yes. No. No, but, but look at us, like look at us, look at society, right? You, you went to school here, I'm assuming, right? Uh, yeah, in California. California, me too, right? How many of your friends in school got drunk and did stupid stuff? Oh, I, did. I got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you think back on those times yeah. and the stuff that you did when you were drunk. Was it worth it? I was <laughs> exactly, exactly. I got a friend I grew up with, got hit by a drunk driver, he's dead. Yeah. Right? I got friends that I grew up with that their parents got drunk, molested them, hurt them, abused them, right? Uh, all people that got drunk it would be a perfectly good person. Any other way you can think of it, just like any of that's going to, you know, interfere with your relationship with God. Man, you are there, bro. You sure you're not already Muslim? You messing with me, bro? Is it like a hidden camera no, you're trying? I just, I, I just tried to find the. You, you got it already, yeah, man. You just, you ready to be Muslim, bro? Yeah, what, what you waiting for? Huh? What you waiting for? I don't know. I gotta read. I gotta read. You ain't gotta read that. You, you I, 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 become, no, look, no, look, no, look. Gotta, look, you I become Muslim and you can read that all day long. But I wanna read it. All right, read it. I wanna read it. Cool. Because I wanna know. But you gotta come back then. Huh? You gotta come back. How, how often you guys come here? Every Sunday. Oh, you guys here every Sunday? Every Sunday. Where you guys? Are, you guys move? Yeah, right now they're doing some construction down yeah. there. So usually we're down by you the by down the down other there. side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but you'll that's find it. Look, you, you, you see which stick out. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You look for the Jesus is a Muslim sign. No, that's yeah. what I said. I was like looking around through my little right, telescope, right. and I was like, wait, what? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, your telescope found you to guidance, man. Yeah, yeah. You didn't think it's gonna find that, huh? No, I didn't. Well, thank you. All right, man. I'm trying to read it. Read it and come back man i know you already got it in your heart you got that natural common denominator you understand it man that's beautiful a lot of people we talk to they're not they're not open-minded like you are okay? and when you got that open heart and open mind i know you end up muslim man so, yeah for sure for sure i got no doubt in that if anybody's got an open mind and open heart and they're looking for guidance allah will guide them okay i hear what you say so you say open heart boom boom that's it it's there right there in your hands right now man go home read it i like that as i think man alhamdulillah come back we're, we're ready, we're ready, yeah, I'll man. I'll be here uh, probably every weekend. All right, well, we're here every weekend, so we'll see you. Thank you, man. All right. Uh, do I look like is a stock it, trader to you? No, it's in the because I'm a Muslim. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I thought you were trying to get my advice on no, what no, stocks no, to no, trade. No. Um, <laughs> stocks, um, they have, so in essence, you become a partner with a business, with a business. right? So you buy, let's say, uh, stocks in uh, Cisco. Okay. They make routers, so now you're an investor. So in Sharia, we have nothing against that. Nothing but against. the problem gets to be is when either they give you riba, like dividends, dividends which yeah. most of them don't give anymore. Yeah. In the old days, but nowadays, yeah. pretty finished, right? Or if they deal with haram, like they get their money from uh, riba, or they get their money from selling alcohol, or pork, or drugs, or uh, you know, whatever else. Okay. But if their product is halal, and they're not giving you any riba, there's nothing wrong with it. Alhamdulillah. Okay. The other question we have. I'm from Macedonia. MashaAllah. Yeah. When people, they die, after their death, we do mevlut. You do what? Mevlut. What is that? That's like, uh, let's say, a, uh, how to explain it? They're like two, three hundred people. Okay. Let, not two hundred, that hundred people, let's mm -hmm. say. And they... They do the la la illa okay. 7,200 times they have to say it. 7,200? Times. All hundred of them. Then but each one of them says it 7,200. No, 7,200. Uh, 7,200. 7, okay. That. Okay. So that's for the person who dies. Right. For, so so this is not in the sunnah, right? No. The Prophet Sallallahu didn't teach us this. When somebody died in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they did the janazah on them. So we should do janazah. Yeah. But to do uh, getting a hundred people or a thousand people or ten people to say a particular dhikr, a particular amount of time and to make a practice, this becomes a bid'ah, innovation. And the Prophet ﷺ told us, Kullu bid'atan dalala. Every bid'ah is a misguidance. Kullu dalala finnar. And every misguidance will take you to the hellfire.
because the imams they come there and they do it. I know uh, a lot of imams yeah. they're not well educated, okay. right? Or the traditions and the bid'at mm -hmm. kind of overwhelm them. Mm -hmm. But our job is to always look at the Quran and what our Prophet did, okay. what the Sahaba did, uh, like Abu Hanifa and Imam Malik and Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmed, these great Imams after the Sahaba, none of them did this, right? Sahaba didn't. If this was something good, the Prophet would have taught it to us. And if, if we do it, like in many our countries, they do a lot of bid'at as well, then we're saying the religion wasn't complete. No? The other big thing is back home, the black magic. Black magic is haram. haram. <laughs> All magic is haram. I, the other thing they do, they, they type some kind of words because we don't uh, know Arabic. Yeah. Right? Like Albanian, Macedonian, yeah. English. They give you like a letter. Yeah. So you keep it with you. Yeah, it's Tawiz, they call it. Yeah. So, so again, this is not from the Sunnah. From the Sunnah. I mean, does it have any meaning or no? So it, it depends what they write. If they write some uh, alfad words of shirk, this is kufr, right? Some people have opened these, yeah. like in Pakistan and stuff, and they have like magic words. And no, some of them have numbers. If they write good, if they write something good. Then it's still bid'ah. Bid'ah. Because, because the Prophet didn't do it. This always, because you go in a bathroom. Yeah, of course. The, and and the first thing is, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu taught us how to protect yourself from magic. What's the best way? The to best that? thing, make your adhkar, your dua. Yeah. Like there are many. Um, inshallah, if you come to the majlis, I'll give you a small book on it. Okay. But an easy one I can tell you. For example, before going to sleep, you put your hands together. You go you like this, not spitting, but spatting. Yeah. And then you read, Qul huwa Allahu had, Qul awdara bil falaq, Qul awdara bin nas. And then you rub your body and you do this three times. It's Sahih Hadith, right? To read Ayatul Kursi before going to sleep, right? Make the athkar of waking up, of sleeping, when you're going to the bathroom. For example, you make the dua, Allahumma ni a'udhu bika min al-khubati wal khabayit, right? It protects you from jinn and things, right? There are many athkar, yani. So making those sunnah athkar, this is what you should do, right? Reading the Quran, the Prophet ﷺ told us that a jinn cannot stay in a house where, where Baqarah is read three nights, right? Three days. So that means if somebody is affected or thinks there's an effect, read Surah Al-Baqarah three days in a row. So these things are in hadith, the Prophet ﷺ taught us, right? To make up a new way, write this and put this and then drink it and pour it and this yeah. and that. Allah, where did they get this from? Okay. Yeah, I'm a restaurant owner. MashaAllah. And we try and be better Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. May Allah make it easy for but you. But again, here we are in some country, we got to make a living. Yeah, of course. And we sell, of course, now. We have pork. Mm. We sell it. What kind of restaurant do you have? It's breakfast and lunch. MashaAllah. Breakfast and lunch. So, what's there? So the best thing for you to do, you can find some alternatives to actual pork, right? They have halal, hand slaughtered, zabiha, yeah. bacon. Yeah. Um, if you need, we can get some brothers contacts that can get you some of those meats. And we don't do a business, we're just yeah, saying I to know, help know, you. Know, yeah. um, but you can find halal, zabiha alternatives and use that. And then, you know, many, when you, when you sell halal meat, for example, many non-Muslims are going to come course, yeah. because it's healthier yeah. and some of it's organic. Yeah. Um, so I would say you switch those haram items out and Allah will put more barakah in your business. Thank you. Hayakum Allah. Jazak Allah khair. It's great to talk to you. Where are you from again? Macedonia? Macedonia. Wow, that's where Alexander was from, right? Yes. Wow. Yes, but the Greeks, they want to take them as we want to take them. So uh, yeah. They can have them. <laughs> we, we, we have the prophets, we have the anbiya, we have the sahaba, we'll take them better. <laughs> Allah, Allah make it easy for you. Because I had this always. Please. Because we have this comment about the dress now. Yes. We had this many times. Now, you dress because it needs, you need by the Islam like this or because you want to be like that, it's your tradition. So in Islam, we have some dress codes, Perfect. right? For women, for example, to be covered in a way that's, that's uh, you know, with the haya, with the shyness, yes, yes. you know, the sharia, hijab, and nepal. For the men, we have our own rules, right? Okay. For example, we have the aura has to be covered, okay. right? We shouldn't make isbal. And we'll explain this to you, inshallah, in detail. Yeah. Other than that, any dress that is not special to the kuffar is permissible, right? Yeah. But for me, if I dress like this, it's a means of da'wah, okay. right? When I'm walking here and people see me, they come and ask me, why are you dressed like that? Yeah. Oh, is that comfortable? Where can I get one? Yeah. So if you do wear this, alhamdulillah, nothing wrong yeah. with it. But if you don't, nothing wrong with that, as long as you are within the bounds of the sharia. For men, like for example, you can't wear gold and silk and things like this. Yeah. So within the bounds of sharia, all libas clothing is permissible. 
some clothing is better. Like the Prophet Muhammad preferred white. White, right? Yeah. So if you wear, you know, it's a little bit off white, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? This is good, but if you wear any, the Prophet wore other colors, nothing wrong with that, right? So Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to get about the meat, maybe you talk to the brother here, he yeah. can get you some contacts. We're going to be around. Thank okay, inshallah. Khalas. We'll see you. Assalamu alaikum. Hit me, go ahead. It's all about this love. What's, what's the, with the practice when you pray? I see some people do it. Ah, some people great do it. question. Whoa, man. They're trying to get like an Egyptian mummy there. It's crazy. The, it's confusing. Me. We have. Our, our tradition is. Excellent. Normal. We have some detailed videos on this uh, and a, a, a YouTube channel called Majdari Bad. I'll give you a short answer, but you can watch that to know the details about all the evidences. The Prophet وسلم, used to raise the hands in the takbir to start the prayer and then he used to fold them. Anywhere from above the navel to the chest is perfectly fine. Okay, there are some for below, but those are weak. And to put it very far up or touching the neck is not correct. To put it past the elbow is not correct. So if you just go like this, from the this uh, chest area, alhamdulillah, you're fine. This is an easy answer. <laughs> what's, what's up with the fingers? In tashahud, you should make ishara, right? You should point because the Prophet did so, and this is a means of making dua. Right? That's it. Just from the beginning to Just the end. Point. Just a point. Not some people, they... There is, there is, and there when is... I, when it's next to me, like... <laughs> there are some ulema that took yuharraku biha, and there is hadith on it. And some ulema said this is a ziyadah, this is addition in the wording. So this is just leave it straight. So easy thing, you just leave it the whole time. In tashahud, you just leave the finger pointing. So you just point at one time, Allah, No, you keep it the whole time. You don't put it back down. This is the authentic hadith. You do biha, he used to make dua with it. So the whole tashahud you leave it. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm giving you the easy answers here. If when you want you, detail, you, we can go. When you travel, especially nowadays, the lie became true, the truth became lie. We're, we're leaving that time period right now. Right. When you travel on some places, I don't feel I don't feel safe. To, you know, to go out there and play in public, come and pray in public. So what I do is, yeah, I have my Urdu and everything, but I do it in a car where I'm sitting. Is that okay? The uh, far salah you cannot make sitting. The fard salah, you have to stand, right? So what you can do is you can go to a private area and pray there, right? So even if you're traveling, like I travel to all kinds, I work as a medical device guy, so I mean, I go to all kinds of countries where there's no Muslims and, you know, you just find, you know, if you're in a hotel, pray in your hotel room. If you're a traveler, like you're staying there less than four days, then you can combine prayers, like pray Dhuhr and Asr together. Yeah, so I, I, pray, I pray at the airport all the time. Alhamdulillah, no problems with it, right? And if you're going to be like, like maybe by the time you land and where you're going to land, you can pray the two prayers there, then you can do that. But the obligatory prayers, unless you're stuck, like let's say you're on a plane and they don't let you get up, right? Where you're forced, that's different. But regularly the fard prayer, you have to stand. The nafal, the extra prayers, you can set. It's okay, but you can do. It's, uh, the fard prayer that you have to stand. Yeah. The Prophet ﷺ, when he used to travel on the camel, for the fard prayer, he would stop the travel, he would get down and pray standing, and then he would pray the, the sunnah prayers on the camel. But if you pray sitting, you get half the reward of standing. Right? So in the plane, you're okay. To, to in the plane, like, like when I fly like Muslim Airlines or some other airlines yeah. which are uh, accommodating like today like I even flew Alaskan recently and I told them I need to pray and they were perfectly okay with it and you know the food serving area I went there I put the sajada I prayed they didn't and like most Muslim Emirates Qatar Saudi Pakistan all those airlines that allow you Malaysia all of them no problem right but if you're on some plane that there you know maybe there's turbulence and the time for salah is going out and they tell you security you cannot get up then what can you do you this is called darura, right necessity but regularly for fourth prayer, you need to stand, right? You can go park somewhere far where the people are not around you. And I mean, alhamdulillah, I live here, I travel. I've prayed in the middle of very, uh, I was in Birmingham, Alabama, a very right wing place. I prayed in the middle of a crowded place. Nothing but love. Nobody, no problems, alhamdulillah. So you put tawakkal on Allah, you're strong guys, mashallah, you're okay. <laughs> One more thing, to go in the Hajj, America. Mm -hmm. A lot of friends with dog, they say, if you owe money, you cannot go there. So it's not that you cannot. No, it's no, the, no, it's no. that if you owe money, then and you are trying to pay off that debt out of necessity, then Hajj is not fard on you because it's too much of a hardship if you're in debt. Yeah. But in our time, some people they take loans for things they don't need. Right? Some people they buy a TV on loan. 
right? So even the loan, it, it, it looks. It's bad, right? So I mean, like, why do you need to buy a TV on loan? Don't, you know, don't get a TV until you yeah. can afford it, right? So nowadays, some people, like in America, most Americans are in debt okay. their whole life. Yeah. So in this situation, you're going to have to evaluate like if, if you owe money, but then you have 30,000 sitting in the bank, then you still need to go for Hajj. Right, okay. <laughs> but so let's say if you owe money for a house or uh, something like that. Yeah, so then you still, because a house, you have a 30 year, I mean, inshallah, non riba yeah, yeah. uh, payment. When 30 years you're going to be paying, you could have 50, 60,000 sitting in the bank. You still owe money in the okay, house, okay. but, but then you still need to go. If you owe people money, best to pay the people first. Best to pay the people yeah. but. If it's necessary, meaning like, let's say I really need money and I borrow from you. Yeah. Yes, I need to pay you back first. Yeah. But if I borrow money because I want to buy a new Lexus, <laughs> yeah. because I don't like my 2019 Lexus, I need a 2020, uh -huh. then then we're playing with the religion, right? Okay. 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 So basically, if the person who owes money is not in need, then he should go for Hajj. He if he has enough money to go for Hajj, either he should pay the debt off, but if he's living with the debt, then he needs to go for Hajj. How you doing? Thank Any you. questions? No. Good. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.